Shroud damage is busted. Why, you might be asking? Well, because shroud damage is effective against almost everything, be it wildlife, scavengers, or VUCA. Not only that, but we can get insane damage with this build. Now, you might suspect that all this goodness must have some drawback. And you'd be right. The drawback is that all fell enemies are immune to shroud damage, not resistant, immune to it. Meaning we deal zero damage to them even with a critical hit. Therefore, I wouldn't recommend playing with a shroud damage only build like this one. But because I like testing around, I made the most powerful shroud build there is. And I want to show you how great this build is against all non fell enemies. So let's start with the equipment. The one I use is Helix. It has great durability and enchantments and it has 19% overcharge and a unique perk, Ethereal Duplication, which provides a 50% chance to spawn another projectile when using it, for a total of up to 3 projectiles per cast with the Wand Master skill. The best stuff to use alongside Helix is Mirage, for even more Shroud damage bonus, resulting in total annihilation when casting the Shroud Meteor spell. I use Ethereal Plane for blocking and parrying opponents. I use 2 Rings of Health for 100 extra health and 8 health regen. I know the Ring of Rapacity is the best for mages, but Shroud Meteor is not eternal, it can only be crafted or found as random loot inside chests, and I mostly use it against big groups of enemies, so we don't need mana regen that much. The headpiece I use is the Archmage Hat, but the Warlock Helmet is also a great option, depending on what you want more critical chance or critical damage. The Warlock shirt and Warlock gloves are very good because we mostly use the wands to deal damage, not the stuff. I also use the Radiant Paladin trousers because we need extra health and health regen. Same thing for the Eagle Eye boots and its juicy stamina regen properties. The Archmage hat, Warlock helmet, Warlock shirt and Warlock gloves can all be crafted at the Alchemist. Everything else can be found inside the chest at this location. It would take too long to go over all the skills picked, but here are some of the most important skills for this build. Terror, in case the opponents survive the Shroud Meteor, they will be stunned so we can finish them off. Quick Charge, because Meteor Shroud takes a very long time to charge. Frost slows the target and allows us to easily retreat after being hit with a melee attack. Dark Arts and Abyss for a combined total of 30% extra Shroud damage. Water Aura and Waters of Life for passive health regen. Exalted and pretty much all intelligence nodes for increased magic damage. Unity, Wand Master and Sting for mana recovery and extra damage when using the wand. Blink, an emergency blink to escape when we're in danger. And some points into constitution and skills related to damage mitigation. The best food to use for this build is the Glow Soup, which provides 5 intelligence for 45 minutes. The Meat Wrap for 5 constitution and 1 intelligence for 45 minutes and the Fruit Ball for 6 health regen and 3 stamina recharge for 45 minutes. When fully buffed by the food, we reach 14 constitution and 23 intelligence and we have almost 1000 HP. We also use the Elixir of the Shroud, which raises our damage by 30% for 30 minutes. This was the Shroud Mage build. I was amazed by how strong this build turned out to be and I'm hoping that in future updates we can have more Shroud spells with eternal variants as well and maybe enemies wouldn't be immune to shroud damage so this build or a similar one could be viable for the whole game, not just a fun to try end game build. If you like this build and want to see more enshrouded builds make sure to subscribe, I have plenty of cool ideas left to try so thanks for watching and see you in the next one.